What drives us to want to make a difference in the lives of others? Well, this is a topic we'll be covering today and more. Hello, I'm Shannon Skinner and I'm happy that you've dropped in for another episode of Extraordinary Women TV where we learn how to put our dreams into action. Welcome back to Extraordinary Women TV. I'm Shannon Skinner. My next guest is Laura Berg, president of My Smart Hands, an organization that helps parents teach their young hearing children to use sign language to communicate. And today she's going to give us some tips on how to turn a brand into a global success using YouTube. Laura Berg, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's so nice having you here. Now, you refer to yourself often as an accidental entrepreneur. I do. Okay, so why do you give yourself that handle? Well, I was a teacher before I started my business, but I really didn't start a business per se. I started teaching classes out of my home as a way to stay at home with my daughter, and my plan was to go back to teaching once she was in school. And uh, I threw up a video on YouTube and people started contacting me about becoming instructors for my, my company and I didn't have a company. I didn't have a program for them to teach and so I created one and I sort of fell into this business and really embraced it and so I accidentally became an entrepreneur. <laughs> and, and, a, and, a, and a hugely successful one. Now, okay, so you teach or you had this really great idea that hearing children would be able to better communicate um, through sign language. Right. Um, but what sparked you to, to want to, to teach your child to begin with? Well, I had taken ASL in Teachers College as my second language and just fell in love with it. And when I was a teacher, my principal had asked me to help with the literacy program. And I did some research on alternative ways to teach spelling to kids and I came across this amazing study that used sign language because it's really visual and it's, it's kinesthetic, it's tactile, so kids would learn that you spell C-A-T, cat, like that, and it processes on a different side of their brain than just an auditory word. And I, I was amazed. And so I implemented this in my program, it worked beautifully, and then I started um, doing more research on it and I kept coming up with the idea of, of baby sign language, it was sort of a new new trend in parenting and I was amazed. I thought I'm going to do this with my daughter when I had one for sure. Give us an example of, uh, of sort of the first kind of communication you had with her and, and what had happened. Uh, so milk I, is the number one thing I recommend parents to do with babies and my daughter started signing milk and my son started signing milk. But my favorite story to tell about my daughter, my big sort of aha, this is why I'm signing, was she was sitting in her high chair and she's eating her Cheerios and she's signing more and more and more and she's throwing them on the floor. I said, okay, look, you don't want more Cheerios then, what do you want? And she signed more cheese. So at 10 months, she was 10 months old, she put together a two-word sentence. I would never even imagine that a baby had a two-word thought process, but she was able to easily tell me what she wanted. So for her, the idea of more meant I want something. It didn't necessarily mean more of what I was giving her. So if she didn't have signs, I would have thought she was done. She's throwing her food on the floor and I would have put her down and she would have thrown a terrible temper tantrum. But instead, she could easily communicate to me, Mom, I want cheese. And so that was my big aha moment because I hadn't offered her cheese and she couldn't have pointed to it. There was no cheese in sight. So how would I know that that's what she wanted? But clearly she wanted something salty versus something sweet. And I know that you've had uh, some parents concerned that, you know, does this affect um, their, communi their verbal communication right. if they're, you know, primarily signing as so young, but it yeah. doesn't. No, it's funny. When I first started my company, I got that question a lot. Mm -hmm. And I have to say now, uh, you know, I'm eight years in, I rarely get it anymore. I think parents are really realizing that that's not true um, because babies want to talk you know, they babble all the time. So when they develop the ability to talk, they, they just sort of drop the signing and go for the talking. What it does is it actually gives them a, a broader language to use. So when they do start talking, the vocabulary tends to be a lot larger because they've used those words already through signs. 
So that's so cool. Yeah, it's very cool. <laughs> and you're getting uh, interest from really around the world. Yeah, exactly. And it's amazing how um, I find YouTube has really made the world a smaller place um, because people I can connect with people all over the world and. Traditionally, people can only really connect with people in their community. And uh, for example, I had this one mom, and this was my moment of this is why I'm doing what I'm doing. And anything above and beyond this is just icing on the cake. Um, when my video hit about 100,000 views, I got an email from a mom, and she had a two and a half boy who was autistic, nonverbal. And so life was very frustrating for them. He hadn't been able to communicate to them. He was throwing major temper tantrums. She wasn't sleeping. Somebody suggested she look up signing. So she Googled signing. Our video came up. Her son heard our voices. He came in and he watched this video over and over again for 45 minutes. And at the end of 45 minutes, he turned to his mom and he started signing to her. And it was the first form of communication he'd ever had with his mom. And she said, if it wasn't for you, I don't know what we would have done. And so by me posting videos on YouTube and sharing my life with my daughter, signing, it's opened up this whole world of communication with her and her son. And never did I imagine I'd be able to touch people on a personal level like that. Now, you um, have something called the Signing Bible. What is that? Right. It's the Baby Signing Bible. And it's a book. It's just basically a how-to guide for parents. So. I wanted to write something that parents could buy and use that, um, you know, if there was no classes in their area and they wanted a tool, I wanted to sort of put all my knowledge into one book and that's what I did. And so it's, it's a how-to guide for parents so they can successfully sign with their child too. And where can people get it? Uh, online, Amazon, they can go Chapters Indigo. It's in stores, most stores, yeah. Now, I'm, I'm really curious. when. Uh, parents are teaching their children uh, sign language, they're hearing children. Do other members of the family, if, they have, if there's older siblings, I mean, does everyone sort of learn it as well and speak uh, in sign language? Yeah, it makes it easier. I mean, when I yeah. had my son, my daughter jumped on board teaching him. She was almost better teaching him than I was. So, yeah, I mean, it's great and all the family members get involved. Okay, so you've created this wildly successful brand um, and YouTube thanks to YouTube I mean you have what 25 million almost yeah. hits on your YouTube channel now yeah how did you do it I know it's my I still <laughs> for, 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 the, for those out there who are you know really would just love to have that kind of success with their businesses and uh, and their yeah. products and services I mean, you did it how? Well, you know, I jumped in is yeah. really what I did. And I found that when I posted my first video and then all of a sudden I had people emailing me asking me to become instructors with my program or parents asking if they could take a class and they were in Florida, I realized that the power that YouTube had in growing a business because it was coming to me. I was not doing anything. I wasn't marketing. I wasn't other than having this video up. And so... I think a lot of companies, a lot of entrepreneurs are nervous about using YouTube and not really sure how to do it or how to start. Um, so one thing I tell people is just start, put it up. You don't have to be a professional videographer to you know, make a video. Sit in front of your computer, do a vlog. You know, People on YouTube are not expecting high quality um, as far as production value goes, videos. They just want to know you as a person. So I even say, you know, if you have a, an investment firm or a law firm, post a video because I would rather know about you and your company by what you have to tell me versus um, reading it on your website. Like video is so powerful. Now what about uh, something that's also very key uh, is monetizing. I mean, we can put up all sorts of videos uh, uh, and, and all sorts of content on the internet. But what about monetizing? I mean, that's uh, something that many people out there are struggling with. Right. I, I was sort of fortunate because I was early in the whole YouTube days. And so when my, my channel hit 300,000 views, YouTube sent me an email and invited me into the partner sharing program that they had just created, which is, you know, when you watch a video, the ad pops up. 
Um, now anybody can be a partner. They, you can apply to be a partner, and I recommend that everybody do because you have a lot more tools at your disposal in the back end that you can sort of annotate your videos and do all of that stuff. Um, so, I mean, when you first post videos, you're not going to make money off of them. That's the reality. I mean, I have, I average about 400,000 views a month now on my videos. And so that's incredible. It's, <laughs> it's congratulations it's crazy, to you. It's it still amazes me. Um, so obviously, I'm going to be one of those people that make money because I have those numbers. But if you're leading into that, and, and that's why you want to sort of post videos, then um, you know it's just a matter of getting your videos out there and approaching, as I said, bloggers to to talk about what you're doing or you know post content, post your videos on Facebook. It's really about numbers and, and viewers and subscribers. What's the biggest mistake that you've made? I think the biggest mistake that I made was not jumping on the whole getting subscribers on my videos. So you can post a little button that says, you know, click here to subscribe. And I didn't do that on any of my videos. And then I joined Maker Studios, which is a YouTube talent network that helps manage your account. And they looked at my videos and they said, Laura, how come you don't have this button on? And I, I thought, okay. So I post the button and my views gained about 100 to 200,000 a month. By just doing that because what people do is they've been subscribing to my channel and then whenever they interact with my video that interaction goes out to their network so it's like an umbrella that that opens so that's the number one mistake I made in YouTube early on is I wish I had posted the whole subscriber thing so in terms of your success and across the internet because it's not you're not just on YouTube I right. mean how else did you build your your such a great brand yeah, um, you know, it's just using uh, social media, Facebook and Twitter, and, and interacting with other businesses. Another tip I would give businesses is to get out there and network. Um, because when you network with other businesses, they help promote you and, and your brand as well. And reach an audience that you might not have originally reached your, on your own. You have a great success tip, and it's my good to know minute. So I want to hear it. <laughs> well, I always tell people that uh, to say yes to more opportunities because when you say no, it closes the doors and ends conversations. So say yes to more opportunities. That's good to know. Yeah. Well, Laura, um, our time is up, unfortunately, but I have really enjoyed having you here and hearing more about what you're doing. And thank you for sharing your story. And uh, I thank wish you. you all the best. Thanks so much, Shannon. For more information about Extraordinary Women TV and my guests and to watch past episodes, I invite you to visit the website at ExtraordinaryWomenTV.com. And I'd love to stay in touch with you. Join me on Twitter for an empowering stream of Extraordinary Women TV updates. On Facebook, we can connect at Extraordinary Women TV. Well, thank you for joining me today. I'm Shannon Skinner. See you soon.